Hi, welcome to the finale episode of Into the Wings. Before we get into the episode, this is a trigger warning. This episode contains references to suicide. If you would like to avoid them, please skip these timestamps. 3 minutes 30 seconds to 4 minutes 21 seconds. 7 minutes to 7 minutes 50 seconds. And 36 minutes 4 seconds to 37 minutes. We hope you enjoy the finale of Into the Wings. Hey guys, welcome back to the series finale of Into the Wings, your musical theatre podcast where we explore the on and off stage lives of your favourite musical theatre performers and creatives. Today we thought because it's the finale we'd switch it up a little bit. So we've actually got two guests today which is super exciting and I'm really excited to introduce them. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce them. Today I'm joined by the amazing Sam Tutty and Lucy Anderson from Dear Evan Hansen. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. <laughs> no pleasure. Thanks no, for having us. Good to be here. How is it? It's an early morning. Sorry about that. Yep. That's Thanks right. for that. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Okay. That's it's my right. pleasure. Appreciate it. I was it. here a little bit early, so. You were. I haven't seen this Fresh. hour in about six months, seven mm. months. So mm. it's nice. I feel that. Yeah. How was the journey here for you both? Easy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yeah. Squeeze the lemon. Absolutely. Used to the route though, because we used to be way down the road. Next door. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Just used to be down there. So it felt like old times. It did. Yeah. Um, so for the few people watching that don't know, you guys were in Dear Evan Hansen together. Mm. Mm-hmm. Would you mind between you just giving a little overview of the story and then also your characters and the roles they play in the in the story? Yes. Yes. So I Start. Yeah, I played um, Evan Hansen, mm. uh, a young 17, 16, 17 year old boy, suffers with uh, quite severe social anxiety. We don't like to kind of detail anything beyond that because it we we get to the audience allows them to kind of view with a different interpretation if they see it again, you know, so we just say social anxiety and he finds himself caught up in like a big lie that he doesn't really necessarily, he wouldn't really find himself in. Um, and it kind of snowballs out of control, and the story is, is is him trying to appease everyone, but hurting himself and everyone else around him. And it's quite it's quite fascinating. It's very honest. It's very beautiful. It's very damaging, <laughs> but also <laughs> incredibly healing. It's very cathartic. It's very natural, but also very unnatural. It's it's a really the juxtapositions are beautiful and. Horrendous at the same time. <laughs> wow. That was good. All that was the description words, all the adjectives. <laughs> just... <laughs> oh my head. Oh my head. Uh, in terms of my character, I played Zoe Murphy, mm-hmm. who is the sister of Connor Murphy, mm-hmm. who you could say is a very. Connor's a very pivotal character. Yes, he's very important. Of the plot. And is kind of the link between us. Um, and Evan is besotted with. Zoe. Yeah. Which is a very. I'm the year below you. You are. At school. Yes. However, it works in the American system. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I'm Evan's love interest, but also Connor's sister. And she's very. Oh, I wouldn't even know where to begin describing her, to be honest. She has so many layers and she's so complicated, but in the most beautiful way. And um, she was an honor to to play i think Mm. she's very unique in the journey that she goes through and i think it's one that's not talked about much in terms of grief um and that uh, navigating that especially when you're young Mm. and uh i'm trying to know what to say without giving too much about the story we can it's not really it's not in london anymore and there's a movie um, and there's a film as well you can if you want to watch it um but connor very sadly and um he he kills himself he Mm. commits suicide uh, and who's obviously the, the brother to yeah. Zoe. Um, so that in terms of grief, that's what we're talking about. Um, yeah. And uh, just very quickly, I'll say that Ev- Evan convinces the family in only ways that are meant to heal them and help them grieve that Connor and Evan were best friends. Um, where in fact, it was the entire opposite. Connor was very cruel to Evan, um, only in terms of he was... He was a bully to Evan, but because he himself was very damaged as well, just as Evan is as well. But so, yes, yeah, so then and that's the whole battle between, oh, we are friends, but it was actually the entire opposite. And then convincing the entire school. And then eventually, thanks to social media, mm. like the entire state. And it just, like I said, snowballs and snowballs. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of layers to it mm. as a show. Mm. Um, as I say, yeah, touching on the grief part a little bit in terms of Zoe's 
background with Connor. They didn't have the closest of relationships. Um, I think she grew up very much um, feeling a bit suppressed by him. And essentially when she, I mean, she has this big song, Requiem, which is gorgeous. And it is essentially about that she, she is grieving, but she's not because they didn't get on. She didn't like him. And it's, it's how she deals with that in kind mm. of going, you know, the very first line that she says is, why should I play this game of pretend? Which is basically her saying, why should I sit and bawl my eyes out? And, you know, say, when oh, you don't he, even he want was to, wonderful yeah. when, when she's going, that's not actually how I feel. Yeah. Um, which, as I say, I don't think that topic is ever really talked about. You know, when someone who is your flesh and blood, you know, goes and you don't feel... Not that she doesn't feel sad, but she doesn't go through the normal grieving process, you could yeah. say, that you think that someone would go through when a family member dies. Yeah. yeah. When you have such like a yeah. tumultuous relationship with someone it was a really fascinating thing to watch lucy portray a character who who wants to be as traditionally sad as one might be yeah but just can't because of there's so much pain and there's so much yeah. hate between the two of them like the opening scene the breakfast scene christ they can't even like you know have normal breakfast without yeah. you know yeah. swearing and shouting I mean, at each other zoe and connor have one line that they say to each other which is excuse my language you that's it <laughs> that is the only language you see them saying and then connor storms off and then zoe and then that's it and then you never see them on stage together again yeah so it's i mean that in itself sets up their whole relationship and what they were mm. i think yeah um, but it's beautifully written um you know benj and justin and steven the team behind it were incredible and i think brought something that is just very unique mm. And yeah, we had a ball. In well as, as its uniqueness, it's also very relatable though, and very 100%, incredibly. Yeah. Um, you can you, like it was based on experiences that Pasek and Paul have had at high school mm. and college, and you know, I don't want to misquote them, but I remember them talking about a student did kill themselves in um, when they were studying. I don't know which college or high school, wherever it was. Um, but then they could see that these people who did not know this person suddenly grieve them and go, well, actually, you don't know this person. You know, you do. So, like, what, what, what's real? What's authentic? And I think that's another thing that we explore with social media is, is, is no one knew Connor. And so, how, so what are you doing grieving this person that you never knew? And is it, is it a facade? Is it simply just so you can post it on Instagram and go, look how much of a caring and considerable yeah. person I am. So that's an interesting avenue that we go down as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it must have been a heavy one. And I can imagine for you, Lucy, that it's, it's quite a complex set of emotions because I imagine mm. your character also probably feels um, a bit guilty yeah. for not feeling the grief. Yeah. So that must be a tricky yeah, there's, emotion. There's so, much, there's so much going on. As I say, Requiem is the main song where she talks about it and it is from start to finish the song is like this that you know and she as I say she talks she's very talkative at the beginning and she's kind of like well, you know why should I play this game of pretend and all of these kind of things and then you have this big note at the end where she almost like that's when you see her break um because before that she's very she's just very guarded that's She's it. very closed off of her feelings. And I think she wants to try and figure it out on her own without the influence of other people. I would say she's incredibly independent as a character. She's very headstrong. Um, and then what's, I think, gorgeous, and it was always my favorite part of the show, is that after she's had this kind of big explosion where she's finally sort of explaining how she feels, the next song you go into is If I Could Tell Her, which is when she's chatting with Evan. And yes. that's the first time that you see her starting to break down the walls yeah. a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. as Evan's talking to her. So I just think it was always such a lovely part of the show that you see her do Requiem where, as you say, very emotional, mm -hmm. having to tap into a lot of not very nice feelings to then go into a song that's a little bit more gentle and it's just about the two of them. Mm. She's, as I say, she starts to break down the walls a little bit and I used to just love that whole transition. Um, kind of going from emotions up here to then them starting yeah. to filter down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was very 
very interesting to play with. As I say, I've never played a character like that. I've never seen a character written like that before. Um, I mean, we got the privilege of watching the Broadway cast do it. We did rehearsals over there for oh, you cool. did two weeks, I think, and then the rest of us came out. I think I did nearly. I didn't. I was just shy of three. Oh wow! Um, yeah, yeah it was you crazy. quit. In. I mean, you did like eighty percent of the show, and then the rest of us did the other twenty. Yeah. So you needed way <laughs> more so rehearsal fun. than the rest of us. <laughs> Percentage, yeah. Yeah, but um, we yes, yeah, so we got to watch them do it as well. Um, lovely girl called Gabby was playing big the role up. when I saw it. Big up Gabby, love her. And we're still in contact today, which is really sweet. Oh, cute. And um, so it was great to be able to watch her do it and watch her interpretation of Zoe. Um, because as much as we have to stick to blocking and all of these kind of things, when we were working with Michael Greif, the director, he very much, I know when I was chatting to him, you know, we're given the background, we're given what's happened just before this. We were given the time frame, like what day is it? What mm -hmm. week is it? How long has it been since yes. Connor's died? Like there was so much detail the scenes weren't the, just scenes. It was like yeah. it was there was a chronology to it. Yeah, and yeah. That there was, was cool. so really much fascinating work that the audience don't see. It's like Thursday lunchtime, you know, like <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. And like it's it like, oh, okay, yeah. that makes me feel human. It's yeah, not just yeah, like yeah. and blink to another scene. It's like so. Here's what you've probably done in between. You've had dinner. You've had lunch. You've got some homework. You, did, 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 did. Uh -huh. you know, it was really fleshing out the things that the audience don't see, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Because even if you want to use Requiem, and if I could tell her as an example, I mean, in terms of my track. I the song finishes. I slumped down on the, on the sofa. We had these discs that would move on and off the stage, um, which would determine what room you were in, what house you were in. And so the disc would come off. I would run backstage, get changed, quick sip of water, go into the other wing, and mm. basically come straight back on again. And so to the audience, they're like, "It's whoop zip! It's literally happening straight away." But I mean, I can't remember the exact details now, but they would have told us like, right, this is three days later. Yeah. So oh, that's cool. at one o'clock in the afternoon, you know, things like that. So we could have that in our head going, yes, I've just come off from something that's very emotional, but I need to get rid of that now because yeah, this is, is yeah. now three days later. So she's past that moment. Mm. Um, so that was always really good to know yeah. those, those details. But um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot the audience don't see in terms mm. of our process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I have a tendency to go off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. It's really cool to hear uh, the way that they help you with the process mm. and getting into mm. your characters. That was going to be one of my questions, so you smashed it. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> mm. Look at that. Had you guys met before Dear Evan Hansen, or did you meet on Dear Evan Hansen? No, we, we, we no. met on Dear Evan Hansen, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, we had like a little gathering at a friend's house. Um, and that was the first time I met you. That was the first time we met. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. we had no idea. Yeah, it was very fun though, because we had a few uh, ways of figuring out who <laughs> played who. Mm. And so we kind of... Everyone tries to keep oh, it on the DL. Is so who's playing who? What is so strange with that, right, is that we all found out who was playing who through one way or another, you know, and we go, right, let's get this illicit, you know, bootleg of a group chat that shouldn't exist yet. It's unofficial, <laughs> got you, got unverified got group, group yeah. chat, right? Um, which ended up being our, you know, professional group chat. Yeah, which is still going. Uh, which is still going. It's still going. Um, but like, and then what would happen is that we then, okay, here's the socials. We'll follow you on Twitter. We'll do this and that. And then these these fans, you know, they're wonderful fans, but they Very would clever. find, they're so, they're terrifyingly clever that they would go, <laughs> okay, Sam followed Lucy, Lucy followed so-and-so, so-and-so followed Lucy. And this is, they, then they had like a the PDF, classes. they had like a forum online and go, here's who's playing who. And when wow. I tell you, they were 98% correct. Yeah, it, was it was fascinating. <laughs> I couldn't believe, I don't know how they did it. Crazy, because we... Here's my creative interpretation of who's playing who. <laughs> and you know, you're like, God, you, you, they could be 12. You know what I mean? And they yeah, were, yeah, they yeah. smash it. It was great. I mean, we, we found out about each other through, I mean, I'm sure I can say this now, because we obviously, as I mentioned, we did rehearsals in New York and we were on a group booking. Oh, yes. So we, yeah. got, the, we, got, the, we got the ticket information through for our flights and everything. And I could see... Who else was like, on yeah, the other so booking else, references so who and else stuff. Was flying? So I actually had everybody's names. I didn't have yours, obviously, because you were on a different flight. Mm. But the rest of the cast that oh. were flying out with me, I had everybody's names. So I was going, oh, well, I know who these people are yeah. now because we're all flying together. So that was kind of a, a way that I found out mm. who, who other people were. But yeah. I was terrified because it was like first 
West End thing, and I was like, I can't speak these words to anyone, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's and you know, and they it's, do, they it do. super important. And obviously, you yeah. don't want to spoil the 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 casting for anyone. That's why they keep it so you yeah. know lip sealed. They love that. They yeah, yeah, they do. yeah, like yeah, it yeah. means that then when the cast announcement comes out, there's such a great buzz around it. And like I have to say, I, I'm sure you felt the same. I was so nervous coming into this show as a graduate. I was yeah. like, no one knows who I am, and I know that these characters mean so much to people. Yeah. And there was this massive pressure leading mm. up to the cast announcement because I was thinking, oh my word, what if people don't like me? You know, all <laughs> of those things go through your head. And what if people don't think that I portray it the way that they see mm -hmm. Zoe? It's a, yeah, it's a fun thing just going yeah. on from that because it was it's already done so well on Broadway. There was that kind of people people would almost inject this pressure onto you going. Now, because it's done so well, are you worried? And it's yeah. like, you just kind of had to transmute that into something where it's like, I know it's done well. I'm riding off the back of something that is really successful. Yeah. Now I'm going to put my creative interpretation onto it, you know? And I think as a grad, we were both graduates at the time. Um, but the, su the it, yeah. support it's phenomenal. was yeah, it's amazing. Great. The trust as well, and it was great. Yeah, yeah, the, I, yeah I have to say, in terms of the, the Evan Fanson's, they they were incredible i think they were just so excited to see new faces see yeah. you know because then i think it made evan its own you know like there was i mean like doug as well was very new yes um, yes so we had other people in the cast obviously who were more established, established. <laughs> but it was such a nice really nice mix of new talent you know people who've been in the industry for a long time and so it all gelled together yes. really, really well. Mm. And I hope, and I do think that people were really happy with how I be. the casting yeah. ended it's up. It's done now. <laughs> Bang yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, yeah, the support was incredible, but it was so nerve wracking. Mm. Yeah. So nerve wracking. But I mean, you were both nominated and Sam, you won Olivier. So it was very well received. Clearly. Yes, it was. It was. Um, yes. Touching on that. So you both had some really cool experiences during Evan Hansen performing mm -hmm. at West End Live, performing at the Olivier's, being mm. nominated, winning. That's a whole bunch to deal with, mm. especially being graduates, West End debuts for both of you. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah both so that's, sure. that's a lot to deal with. It's coming. wild. It must have been <laughs> a, crazy. a crazy time. How was, how was performing at West End Live? Yeah, it's very scary that it's very, very scary because it's the whole it's in the name because it's like and I know that our whole entire job is to perform live. <laughs> but when you're kind of outside of your environment mm. in this controlled, you know, you almost feel so at home at the theater. It's like this is where I'm meant to be doing yeah. this. So it doesn't feel live. It's like the audience. I'm very lucky. I'm fortunate this audience are paying to see me. So it's like I have that kind of and you have that stage where you're like, yes, now I can do it but yeah. because it, there was just the entire environment was just entirely different i mean it's it like was very festival, very scary it? Yeah, yeah it was very 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 it's scary it's like a concert yeah. yeah it was the most i'd ever certainly ever performed in front of in my entire life it was very very yeah fantastic yeah. yeah i mean i like i don't know about other actors or i don't know how you feel about it but i i personally really struggle with concert style that's because yeah. i know that other other shows that perform like they're in costume and they almost have a big thing whereas for us it was literally you stand there with a microphone yeah and i've been so used to being on stage as zoe singing these songs mm. that actually then when i had to almost do it as myself it's just yeah. entirely I, was like, I don't know how to be me on yeah. a stage with a you, microphone you spend your entire rehearsal process convincing yourself that these are human beings that you're playing but they are in fact so not do you know what i mean they're like they, and so when you when you're you know when you're forced to perform <laughs> like as yourself so you yeah. know the olivia's royal albert hall all these charity things western live it's just something i have no idea how to do this song yeah because yeah. it's like this is so the, the beauty of evan hansen is that the songs can be standalone songs but when you see when you scroll out zoom out and you just see the bigger picture the, mm. the marriage between scene to song back to scene is so I've never known it in any other production in my entire life and so I'm, I know I'm biased but it is phenomenal and I think that's the true foundation of Evan Hansen is that it, you don't see a musical theater it's not like boom number you know what I mean it's like <laughs> yeah. which is great great yeah fine love it if you're seeing that but because this is a story and it's human beings and it, but the difficult thing is looping back to Western Live is that okay now here's a mic this is Sam Tutty this is Lucy Anderson's yeah. song and it's like well I don't yeah. know who I am 
purchasing this song. Yeah. I know there's an M form and there's a bit you just take extracts of our characters to make it a bit yeah. snazzy, but you know. I mean, weirdly, yeah. I felt way more comfortable singing on top of the Canada Oh, we did the, Canada the, the, House. Yeah. That was West End Live as well. It was it was like a what was that, 2020, 2021? Yeah. We did like a lead up to West End mm -hmm. Live yeah. where people would do um random songs and we were strapped in harnesses to the top of Canada House in the, Trafalgar, Trafalgar Square. Square yeah. And you watch the video and I didn't realise how laid back I look. Like I've got my mic, <laughs> I'm like leaning like this and we're I did not many in any way. High. I was not scared in any way. No. I love I me mean, to be fair, I love heights, but like you just felt so Detached from the audience. It was amazing. Anyone who was looking, you couldn't see. Yeah. Anyone who wasn't looking, you didn't care. It was, and it was just like, I'm just going to sing myself. Singing yeah. and just like sky. Yeah. Wow. It was so, it was so. We had cool. in ears and stuff because the like, we had to have in ears because the echo was so yeah. severe because the speakers that <laughs> like the audience were listening to were delay. so far away. <laughs> it was like <laughs> literally like second and a half, oh, two wow. seconds delay. It was mad. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was really, really cool. And yeah. that was all part of West End Live as well. Um, and I mean, Things like, I mean, we both went to drama school as well. And I, it's something that I've never thought of that actually when you when you are involved with shows and stuff like that, there are these extra things that you will get involved in that I think kind of just have learned on the job in terms of doing concert style stuff mm. and things like Royal Albert Hall, mm. which mm. is removed from the theatre. Mm. So that's been a massive learning curve just in terms of being introduced into the industry as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 yeah, it must be weird taking mm. your songs that you've got so many emotions attached to in the show yeah that i hadn't thought about that. yeah it's, it's a very it's still it's only what it's only something that you consider when you're faced with it as well yeah. it's not something that you can ever possibly go right and i might be doing this song <laughs> detached from the context yeah. it's like no he's yeah sort of... i think you guys came across well at west end Live. <laughs> yeah, it's very there's a funny clip of you sam anything you say the audience are just cheering it's very it's just, yeah. bizarre yeah. it's very like honestly and i thought to myself genuinely i was on stage like no wonder some pop stars go insane because <laughs> i genuinely not to sound apologies like an <laughs> but i felt like a god for about four seconds and i was like <laughs> hello and it just be like this <sighs> yeah and i was like who am i to deserve such a ridiculous response like you know and it's so you really like go oh my god am i am i jesus is this like i suddenly just like bow down but you know like it's just so funny the response that you jack and doug got for sincerely me as well mental sincerely me is not done much and i was so happy that they chose to do it when we came back to west end live we did it twice lockdown. yeah yeah because i think it, it's such a good crowd song and everybody loved it mm. everyone went nuts people were jumping up and down yeah 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 um and like i loved when jack has to go oh kinky and yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. audience were just like whoa yeah, kinky, kinky. Yeah. Like, it was so <laughs> that was great it was so good me and rupert were in the wings just like oh. it's great vibes it was so yeah, it was, really yeah. Fun. it was really good i'm so glad that they chose to do that one because mm. it's such a great song mm. and yeah. one of the more happier songs yes it's not really <laughs> many joyous songs in the show <laughs> map nice to have sincerely me yeah was it really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All good songs though. All great songs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What what do you what do you think your favourite memories from doing Dear? Are there any that you really, really cherish? Oh my god. Oh wow we. Um yes, there are so, a lot of backstage moments. Yeah, I think the thing is because you could the 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 rarity with Emma Hansen is that there is there are, was it eight principles? Something like that. Mm. Something like that? Yeah. Eight? yeah, eight. So you can hear a pin if if one of us was having a bad day or a quiet day or you know just a closed day you could hear the pin drop and it was like the cogs aren't you know so you, to have that trust in each other that we no matter how we're feeling or what we're feeling we had such a great relationship with each other it was mm. it, there was so much trust and there was so much on all of our shoulders a lot of support and there was so much support so i, I think the backstage nonsense that happened you know <laughs> unfortunately i didn't get to experience much backstage stuff he was working but the yeah. stuff that i did hear about was really time. cool like just really funny just chilled you know like wine and cheese and sure i shouldn't say that like we had wine and cheese nights we and stuff like and during the show <laughs> like you know and it was just that but what the thing is for me and i know it's different for other performers i don't know how it's for you Luce, but like I, when i'm relaxed when i'm having fun and when i know the piece and i trust myself and the audience is enjoying it it's like okay that performance is then elevated you know it's like okay because the what the, the problem with this show is that the audience have got to trust the cast that okay we've got this you don't have to be like 
okay, do they have it? Do they not? You know, there's that whole relationship. And it's the same with any show. So mm. just the backstage stuff that, which really cultivates in turn, in my experience, a better show if just the mood's great and yeah. you know, everyone's having fun. Like obviously there were days where we were just like, I'm shattered. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to my room. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. But, but I think um, we, were, we were all close enough that, because like I know in terms of how the backstage setup was, we had like the girls' corner and the and the boys. I mean, they were next to each other in terms of where we would get changed. If one yeah. of us was having a bad day and we were all backstage, we would just like text each other and be like, "I'm really, I'm yeah. really not in the mood today. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm having a bad day. Don't speak to me." And yeah. we'd be like, "Absolutely fine. Let them get on with their thing." And yeah. like we had that kind of relationship where you could do that and just be like, "Guys, please, I need my space today." Yeah, yeah. and think, it would be fine. Yeah. And it's such an emotionally heavy show. Everyone's going to have those days where yeah, you just 100%. like, I just need to come in and do my job and, and go home for my own sanity. And that's exactly what it is. Like what we found out, what I found out more than anything in this job is that it's a job. You know, it's essentially, it's we're a getting our bills job, paid. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we're very lucky, very fortunate, very, there's a lot of pizzazz. There's a lot of, you know, sprinkles and woohoo, look at this. Like, but then at the end of the day, we had we, when we had our first opening night it was like wow back after you know two years of lockdown that was such amazing build up and then the show finishes you go we've got to do that again and then that's when it's like now i'm having a great time but then now it's a job you know yeah. Yeah. like if it was a one night only you know come on <laughs> come on you know like then there'll be a lot more like i'm not really sure what the word is but i think when you when you're in a show you really that's when you get to see it for the for what it is and like yeah. the reality of it and it's not just what you see like on social media and it's like not what you just see like it's not just the good stuff it's like the stuff that you do find challenging i wake up and i go you know what i'm allowed to not want to do this show today yeah, you know <laughs> but you know as a professional it's your responsibility to do it you know yeah. um and i think that's but and then it goes back to having fun and favorite memories and i think to answer your question i think it was just being able to share the show with the people that I was with because I've never I, I I would never know anyone any anyone better to do each role than the people that they were cast so Jilgen casting wow thank you Jill bow down because <laughs> um, she just went knocked it out of the park because they were just yeah. they were just they were human beings yeah you know they were just yeah, they the were, chemistry between us all I think that's what a lot of people would so in terms of feedback that I would get at stage door and things like that, people would go, you can tell, like when we watch you guys on stage, we can tell that the chemistry is just there. Yeah. The chemistry between you all, you can see it. Yeah. And it's it's so important, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is why I think casting directors must have such a hard job because you, you've got to find people that match up. Get them at the Olivier's. Olivier on wore stage. one of castings, that's what I'd say. <laughs> Genuinely, like, yeah, because yeah, I mean, like, it. yeah, you'd be sorry, you'd be on stage, and like during the summer when it was really hot, and like there was no aircon, it was rubbish. And it was, I mean, there was in Bex's room, so yours and Bex's room were like just off the stage, and okay. she had aircon and she had a freezer, and like, oh, wow. eat a cup every couple of days, like, we'd all take it in turns to buy like a box of lollies, <laughs> yeah. and we'd put them in the freezer, <laughs> we'd be sat in the interval, like, with our ice lollies and our twisters. Uh. Like, but I used to, um, I used to feel really bad because my timing of when I would eat stuff was terrible. Mm. And I would have like... Like every... entire pizzas in minutes before I once, a show. I once before did. a scene. I don't know how I did After it. After a scene. I did a two for Tuesdays. Even in a And I ordered it to arrive in the interval. And I ate about one and a half of the pizzas in the interval. Imagine that. Came wow, on, I'm not going to listen Imagine on, that. Came on for only us. And I thought, oh my word, I'm going to be so... I don't know how she did like, <laughs> And I had a garlic bread as well. And the garlic bread and cookies. I was so hungry. I don't know what was wrong with me that day, but I was so hungry. I hadn't eaten in I had weeks. Munchies. Really? And then, but then I was. <laughs> no, she didn't. I didn't actually have the munchies. She I'm, didn't. I'm very well behaved. Delete that. And um, I, but I was so worried. I was like, am I going to be able to sing? Because I was just so focused on food. Yeah. I thought, oh god, the cheese is going to make me claggy. I remember going <laughs> on my only eyes. I was so scared that I stank of garlic. I had about five mints <laughs> and breath spray. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you said you were like, no, I can tell that you ate a pizza. <laughs> yeah. No, it funny. was, yeah, we had, well, we had so much fun. Yeah, we had great. so much fun off stage. And I think it just enhanced the performances on stage for mm. sure. Like I yeah. think some people think, which sometimes it happened that you'd go on, you do these really heavy scenes, and then you go off and, and then, you know, that's you for the show. But actually sometimes I would, 
like when I would come off from Requiem, like just had this big moment, it's so emotional. And then Rupert would always run off and we would come off the same wing. Rupert's a wind up. Rupert, who Rupert's, played, he Rupert's, played Larry. Rupert's a psychopath. He, I want that clear. <laughs> he was the jokester. <laughs> He did. He was the prankster, the joke. I didn't feel safe working with him. <laughs> <laughs> he's an incredible actor. Um, very good at he's what he does. He's a child. He is. He's a massive child. But I love that about him. I um, hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but he would. We'd come off. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> we'd come off from Requiem, and we would have um, like the emails there's a whole bit about emails that are being mm. sent and we've both got emails in our hands and he knew that i had a quick change so i would run off and i would hear like <laughs> and he'd be rolling the, he'd be rolling the pages up into a ball or an airplane <laughs> and then whilst i'm trying to get changed he's like lobbing bits of paper oh. at me and it's like that would be the fun that we'd have and i'm like yeah. i've got like one minute to get changed have a drink of water so, go back yeah. on there's such stupid like to actually properly answer your question one of my favorite ever memories consistently happened in the show was when Rupe, you're doing requiem and Rupert, who plays Larry Murphy, who's the rich father and the father to, to Zoe Murphy and Connor Murphy, um, and is eventually a father figure to Evan. Um, but he, Rupert is doing this big belting harmony line for Lucy's big last note at the end of, of Requiem. And there, and he's really close, stays left. So myself, Be Becky, who plays my mum, Heidi Hansen, a couple of ASMs, sorry, I'm not going to name you, but you know that. Um, we would like, we had like, oh God, we had like, we'd buy like fake poos and stuff like that. <laughs> and like pretend that we'd like, we'd spread our legs and then pretend that we'd like, sorry, like on the floor. And they would just like plop them and he's trying to harmonize <laughs> and he's like shaking. I didn't know you did stuff, stuff like that. Oh my God, there'd be stuff when we're oh, like, we've got words. like Pringles or something, we're eating, I'll just pass him one and he'll just go yeah. like, and then he'll go like, why will show no requiem? You know. Do you know how much of that should be included out like Every that? single drop. I'm already finished. You can't fire me. Yeah. It's done. Sounds so, a yeah. nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. But we yeah, did, we so, had... You can tell there's just so much. It yeah. was just insane. But we also did a great job as well. We never made, we made sure that we were like, we got close a few times where it was like, okay, that was a close, that nearly yeah. affected our performance. Let's bring it back. But like, you know, it was great just, you know, walking that line. It was like yeah. a big old, it was like a shot of adrenaline, you know? <laughs> Made me feel alive. <laughs> and it's important in such a heavy show. It's as so about. It's really important. It, just, it enhanced moments. all of our relationships, didn't it? Because the people we're playing are human as well. It's like no disrespect to any other show out there. Like I'm not pretending to be an impossible, I don't know, like musical theatre, you know, I'm a, I'm, I will not actually diss any other show. But like, um, I would, I'd go off stage and I'm, then I go back on stage and I'm still a human being, you know, I'm still yeah. flawed, I'm still imperfect, blah, 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 blah. So it, like Lucy said, it just, perform, being a human being just enhances your show, the yeah. show, you know, because, yeah. And no, I mean, no disrespect to any other show, but it is a heavy show. Mm. It, Absolutely. Heavy show. it was yeah. great performing real people in mm. a, in a, we call it a play because it's the first thing, first and foremost, it's, it's a, you know, yeah, it's a they, play the, it's a, I mean, with even, songs, it's what it's labeled as. But, um, even yeah. the writers would say that though. Yeah. They were like, we like to think of it as it's a play with songs and, which is a musical basically. Um, but that's how we would like, we'd have to kind of handle it. But yeah, it was great. It was fun. Yeah. We loved it. No, it's cool. We, I was speaking to um, my friend Paige. We had her on actually the first episode and she was telling us she's Christi she's alternate Christina at the minute. And she was telling us how she always takes a cold shower after her show to disattach from the, because yeah. also quite a heavy role. So it's interesting to hear everybody's different ways. It's really cute that you guys have fun. Oh, yeah, we're fortunate. Very, very fortunate we all clicked as well as we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were so lucky. Very, very lucky. What are your guys' thoughts on the Dear Evan Hansen movie? Have you seen, have you watched the movie? No, I no, haven't. haven't no. I've not seen it. I, I think it. I, I didn't watch it because, I mean, it came out just before we went back. Yeah, I, I, I think professionally speaking, I didn't watch it simply because I didn't want to have, I don't want to take anything. Yeah. I didn't want to be influenced by yeah. someone else's performance because I think, yeah, I'm, I'm someone where if I, if I watch someone else do it, I didn't do it so much with, with Gabby when we watched her on stage, but yeah. I also think my mind was in a billion different places whilst we watched that show, because as much as it was great to enjoy watching her do it, I also needed to look at like her blocking, yeah. where she was coming on yeah, and off, th things like that, that. There were a lot of technical elements that we needed to pay attention to as well. 
but I think with the film, I, I didn't want to watch it because I didn't want to watch it and then be influenced by her performance. You know, that's her Zoe. Yeah. That's how that's her interpretation. She may have been directed slightly different than how we've done it on the show. So mm. I just thought it was better to stick with, especially because we were then about to go back into rehearsals. I was kind of going, I need to make sure I stick with who my Zoe is mm. and not... For sure. Um, not watch someone else yeah. do it until yeah. I've always meant to watch it ever since we left. I was like, when we're finished, I'll, I'll watch it, yeah, I'll watch it, but I've can. never done it. The fine line between playing Evan, there's a fine line and it's, how do you not look like a lying sociopath? How do you not look like you're gaslighting this grieving family into yeah. liking you? You know, that's the, that was the first thing. Yeah. First and foremost, Michael Greifer said, you can't, cause it's so easy to, you've mm. got to, you, the audience has to like you. They have to, grieve with with the family but they also have to understand and consider what evan is doing is rational and it just obviously this isn't like you know at the end of the day just be like i didn't know this guy you got it the reason very quickly as to why there's this this miscommunication is that evan has to write letters to himself which is why it's called dear evan hansen so his therapist tells him to write letters to himself about why today is going to be a good day connor cruelly takes the letter and he gets really affected by the letter because within the letter evan mentions zoe and how everything is relying on zoe 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 um she's she's the person i i need right now um and it says finishes with sincerely me which is then another song called sincerely me. it's all coming together um <laughs> connor takes it gets really affected kills himself the next day has this letter on him parents think that he's written this letter to Evan Hansen, which is where we get the whole, okay, they're best friends. So this is the crossroad that Evan faces where it's like, where do you stand? And the problem that Evans have is that you've got to make Evan's decisions look rational. And I think a massive key thing that that helps with is having the audience physically there with you who believe that they are just as responsible as Evan for making those decisions. Yeah. And with no disrespect to the film, but I think having a screen in front of you really just kind of removes your, your responsibility from it. So you see this, this boy making these decisions and it's so easy for you to go, stop, what are you doing? Um, and the play really just draws the, you know, just goes, right, I mean, I'm watching this yeah. world unravel. Yeah, and that's, yeah, a, you yeah. know, the beauty of theatre is that you watch this, live performance happen you know mm -hmm. obviously there's that famous thing you've got to be saying the words for the very first time on all of that for an actor's point of view so yes that is what i'll say about that <laughs> Done. Thank you. end of sentence <laughs> <laughs> end of novel yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move on we've spoken a lot about Derwin hansen um so i want to move on to your guys introduction to musical theater slash the industry just performing in general where did you both find your passions has it always been something that you knew you wanted to do musical theater or perform i i being honest i can't remember when i first kind of got a thirst for it you could mm. say i know that for a few years i really battled with the thought of whether or not I should attempt to try drama school mm. I originally got into university to be a pediatrics nurse so and I was due to go and do that and I just had I remember I had this complete meltdown in the kitchen to my mum and I just burst into tears because I was going I, I, I love the idea of being a nurse and and you know I think it's an incredible profession to do and they're incredibly hard-working people and I'd love to be part of that but there's something inside me that's telling me that I should at least give it a go. And because I feel like something like nursing, acting, acting a go, yeah. Right. Um, not the nursing. Not the nursing. <laughs> but I mean, that's something I feel like, and this was kind of where I came into my decisions is that I thought uh, nursing's never going to go. That's something mm -hmm. that it's always going to be a profession that's going to be with us. And if I felt like I went down the acting route, if that didn't work out, nursing is something I could always go back to later in life mm -hmm. you know there's there's no age limits on you know what you want to do career-wise so I was like maybe that's something I could look at doing later and I'll mm. give acting a go and I as I say I remember having this absolute meltdown to my mum in the kitchen going 
I don't know if I want to be a nurse. I think I want to audition for drama school. And I'd done, uh, I was part of Chichester Festival Youth Theatre and I'd done shows with them. And that's where I really started. It was doing those shows with Dale Rooks, who's an incredible director. And she's, she still, yeah, she still works for Chichester. Um, she was a massive influence to me because she's always been so good to me and so kind um, and super encouraging. And it was my experiences with her. I did three three of the shows with the youth theatre and she directed all of them. And she very much um, creates a professional environment, even though you're no, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> even though you're all up to, at that point, I think you, you could only stay with the youth theatre until you were 18. So, you know, we're all young adults, um, but she very much treated us like, professionals because it was on the festival theater stage it's considered a professional production mm -hmm. and so that was where I actually kind of got my first taste of what the industry could be like um and that was when my mind then started to explode because I was going what do I do do I audition do I go and be a nurse I just don't know and then that that's basically kind of how it all started I mean obviously I loved doing drama and stuff when I was little um, but I was one of those kids that wanted to do everything. Yeah. So like I did trampolining, I did swimming galas. I used to make my own costumes and dress up as a penguin. I sellotaped <laughs> um, paper to this my mouth. This was last week as well. Like. This was yeah. last week. <laughs> <laughs> I sellotaped a beak to my face when I was about five nice. to be a penguin. Like I think I've always been quite creative. Like a Black very Mirror episode, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've always been very outdoorsy. I've never considered myself that academic, to be honest. I really, really struggled in school with exams. Yeah. I was one of these people who... I don't, I'm, I'm not a nerd either. No, I'm, I was cool when I was a kid. I wasn't cool. I was bad at maths, so I was cool. That, oh, I was bad was at maths rule. as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I did rule. get a B at GCSE. I got C. But I did have to have a tutor like twice a week to yeah. really keep me going. Like I really, really struggled in school. Yeah. But then anything that was creative, music, acting, like sporty stuff, very active, was kind of where I thrived, I think. Yeah. Um, and th that's kind of me, I think, in terms of... <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's me in terms of where it all started so you could say I actually started quite late in terms mm. of because I know you have some people where they're like I went to dance school yeah, since I yeah. was four mm -hmm. and I've danced seven times a week for 27 hours in a day <laughs> you know you get people like that and hats off to them because it's super hard work and the dedication is incredible but just my own personal journey I think I came into it slightly later just because yeah. I had lots of things to consider, I think. Yeah. yeah. In terms of my decisions. Yeah, I was quite similar. Yeah. I was quite late as well. I really, I was really into athletics and running and stuff like that. I was really, I was determined to like run for my country. You know, like it was, I was in the army. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so my country <laughs> to run. Um, and yeah, then I just kind of, I got to a point where I was running for my county. We got West Sussex. So. Um, <laughs> yes, West Sussex. <laughs> <laughs> and. I was like 14, 15, and I was running with these like 21 year olds. Yeah. And, you know, they were so fast, and I was so tiny and small and frail. And <laughs> I just started so to like, I just started to like, and I really just, the hard work didn't seem to be as, as rewarding. Yeah. Um, as what I was expecting it to be. And I just kind of fell off the, the, the horse a bit with that passion. And then I ended up, you know, God, blimey. I, I did some auditions for, you know, when I was in year six, I did some carol concert auditions, mm -hmm. found that really easy. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, and I thought it being easy just made it easy. I didn't think or consider. And I still do sometimes to this day consider because something I find something easy. That means it is. It doesn't mean that I'm good. You know, yeah, and I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. something that I've always struggled with in my career. It's like whenever I achieve success, this is getting a bit deep, but like I've been like, oh, that means anyone could do it. Do you know what I mean? Like even with Evan Hansen, I'd never considered it as profoundly incredible as other people have mm. you know like it was very it's a very bizarre thing you know is what it is but anyway um i'm gonna cry no uh <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to then I, yeah so I, I did some auditions for like carol concerts found that really easy was like, oh great got some good grades at gcse to beat at performing arts found it again really really enjoyable and easy and it was really fueling all the physical energy that I had and I just want to like you know because that was another thing running did I was just so, had so much constant energy I just have to burn out um yeah and just did auditions for drama school just decided it was the thing I want the direction yeah. I wanted to go after performing arts just went yeah this is fun I enjoy it scratching that itch that I thought 
cross country running and long distance running and athletics did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now here went to Italia Conti. They got Conti there. Yeah. Oh, they're like Guildford, I think. Um, but yeah, it was great. It was Do great. Where the school is? I don't know where the school is. Where are they? They <laughs> were in Farringdon Barbecue. It was a cool place. They, yeah. they moved. Yeah. So like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I can't remember. Now. Um, but they yeah, it was great. Learned a lot. A lot of dancing. But um, <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Now I'm here. Yeah. Dance over. Theatre cafe. Here we go. I think it's really inspirational for a lot of people out there that are considering should I go into the industry, should I not, seeing professionals, people that they idolise, getting into it late and like yeah. yourself, like on the path to be a nurse and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I think a lot of people have that, I think. Is pediatric yeah. nurse for kids? Pediatrics. Yeah, yeah I wanted cool. to specialise in like neonatal care because my, my younger brother is autistic and he was born very prematurely. I think he was about three months premature. Wow. And I think that's always sort of stayed with me and chatting to my mum about, uh, well, my mum and my dad about their experiences. And and I just think it's such a, I don't know what the right word is. I feel like if you, obviously I don't know, I was very young when it all happened, mm. but I think having your tiny little baby born too soon and the care that has got to go into that, not only for that baby, but the parents and the family as well. It's, mm. it's such a big thing. And I just, yeah, I feel like I've spoken to them about it lots in the past. And so there was something in me that potentially wanted to go down that mm. route because I felt like I would love to be that person yes. that could be the help and the support and the anchor yeah. for families that are going through something like that. And you never know. But you maybe, chose maybe. acting instead, so... But I chose acting instead. Bit selfish, oh well, never <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> acting helps, yeah, you know, acting helps people in it does. different ways. Is, I was going to say, it's, like, it's a testament to this industry, really, that um, you, you, can, you can join so late and you, can, you don't have to go the, fun, the traditional routes. You know, I, I always used yeah. to think, I always used to think, if you don't go to drama school, one, you're an idiot, <laughs> you know, and you're not going to get in this industry. That is so not true i, no, I not genuinely true. not just saying this i think i've worked with more people who i haven't gone to drama mm. school like in yeah you know i just i go where did you train they go oh, i didn't and they're like starring in this minute and it's just like and I, when, when i first heard that i went what you didn't so what did yeah. you do and he was like oh, i just worked mm. and i was like what i said like, what did you do and it's just like oh no i just worked in like matthews or prep yeah and, and just auditioned it's like oh yeah, you know, and I, I think there are some people who I have worked with and, and do know. I won't name any names, but they should have gone. And then there are some people who I went, "Oh, you didn't need to go." You know, so there's that argument. Yeah. It's like what they teach you, etiquette, mm -hmm. and you know, this is is really useful. And I yeah. think it sometimes it can only help. I think drama school can only help, but I think it isn't. It's not the be all and end all. No, 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 because and I mean that, and unfortunately, drama school is still not financially accessible for a lot of people. No, I was on the scholarship. I was on the scholarship the as well. Only, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to go. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's still a long way to go with with that, but I, I yeah, suppose it's just I suppose yeah. it's just making clear that if there is someone who may be thinking, oh my God, I can't afford drama school, you yeah. know, it's out of my reach and things like that. It's not, there, there are a lot of grants and things that you can try and get hold of and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, Got, it's not yeah. the be all and end all. It's not important. There are, yeah. there are, yeah, there are other routes there into other the routes. into the industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I suppose it's just making sure that, especially young people, know that. Mm. Um, because I think some people do just go, I have to get to drama school to be at the top of my game so mm. that I can get an agent so that I can go. But mm. in the process, I've got to spend thousands and thousands of pounds to get there and things like that. And I think mm. sometimes that could maybe be a bit of an overwhelming thought for people. Yeah. Um, I know it was for me. Like I, as I say, we were both on scholarships. We were both really lucky. Mm. Um, and but extraordinarily I, talented. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember panicking about it and speaking to my parents about it and going, oh my God. And especially as well with nursing at that time, the NHS paid for your fees. Oh, cool. Um, so I was literally, my yeah. parents must have been despairing. You I've gone the from, wrong choice. I've yeah. gone yeah. from, you know, stable career, NHS are paying yeah. for my fees. Yeah. Helping people. To, yeah. to wanting to go to drama school, yeah. which would be... Tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah. A year. <laughs> so they must have been going, oh my God. But no, my parents are incredible. They're, they've always been super supportive They're of great, anything yeah. that, I, you know, me big or up, my... Uh, big up mission. mum and dad, Judy and Trev. Um, oh. They, yeah, of me and, you know, my siblings, they've always been incredibly supportive. So I'm very lucky. I've got oh. a great network of people yeah. to kind of 
help. Yeah. <laughs> like you always need help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a very tricky thing to do on your own. Um, yeah, for sure. Plow through. But yeah. I think it's really important advice that it's not drama school or die. Exactly. No. That is very true. That, that is very, well. very true. Like, I phrased. just scraped a C, drama GCSE. <laughs> I answered the wrong questions on the paper exam. Oh, it's always the written one. And it's and yeah, yeah, it's always the written one. This is what I mean, not academic. Answered the wrong questions. I don't know what I was doing because it wasn't the play that I'd studied. <laughs> and yet I was answering oh. I was answering oh. questions oh. about a play that I hadn't studied and I was going this doesn't, make, this doesn't make any sense. And it's because I answered the this. wrong things. It has a beak tape to our face. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have gone into costume design. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah. it's not so grades, you... drama school. It's not the be all and end all. Yeah. It's, if you want to do you know, it, go for it. Yeah. If you don't, do it. That's okay too. Yeah. Yeah, because it was some of the best years of my life doing drama and school. And some of the worst, you know? And some of the worst. <laughs> No, you are emotionally it was great. torn apart. I had a great time. <laughs> and put that together. Yeah. No, yeah. it was amazing. No, there was a guy recently at the start of the year, actually. I can't remember his name. But he was a French guy. And he was visiting London. And he just put his pictures of his headshot and his details all over, like, the side of theatres, lampposts. You've probably seen his headshot oh, unconsciously. I am, head, like, like this in London. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, get me on. <laughs> and then he just booked... I can't remember if he booked an agent or a job, but literally just from putting his headshot on walls. What a story. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, that's really cool. That's very impressive. It's just like, again, testament to the, obviously testament to his incredible passion and drive. But yeah. To the industry, for just, you know, sometimes being infamously closed can yeah. be at times very, you know, surprising. Yeah. yeah that's great. And just being in the environment. Mm. Just, yeah. just knowing that's people. Cool. And very cool. That. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Google him then. <laughs> French guy. <laughs> Lamp post face. Yeah. Lamp post face. <laughs> Lamp post. I should find out his name. I'll find out his name. Moving well, I was moving on to previous credits. Obviously, it's both your your West End debuts. Mm-hmm. So, this will be a short conversation. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. We're done. <laughs> <Have an answer. laughs> um, you, uh, Lucy, you were in The Music Man in two thousand eight. I was very young. Was very that at young. Chichester? That was at Chichester Festival Theatre. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't in the youth theatre at that time, but there was kind of an open casting call that they needed children. And just on a complete whim, I was like, yeah, I'll go along. It might be quite fun. And somehow managed to bag the job. I think out of all of the kids, there was only six girls. That's why you got it. Six girls and the rest were all boys. We were forming like a... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry to make a joke, no more. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, but it's the stuff that goes over my head. Um, we, yes, yeah, so there were only six girls and the rest were all boys um, helping form. We were like the kids that were helping form the band. Um, yeah, that was 2008, and opening night was my 13th birthday. Brian Connolly was in it, and he bought me a pack of donuts and wrote me a card, and he left oh. it in like the kids' dressing room. It was really, really sweet. That's sweet. But that was kind of my first professional yeah. credit was, yeah, I was 13. You got paid? No. See what we're doing. They were so much fun. Cool slave driving. Had an industry. absolute blast. Like we would get the because we would get the coach up to like they'd provide us and they'd send the kids up in a coach up to London for the day wow. to go and do rehearsals and like it was such a cool experience yeah. as a Sounds kid. Great. And I got to miss time off school, which obviously when you're That's that age best. is just really cool. Yeah. And I used to I was such an idiot. The the school bus. I used to see the school bus from my form room come into like the playground and drop everybody off. It had the music man on the side, and I was oh. like, I was like, I'm in that. I'm doing that at the moment, actually. <laughs> Being that annoying kid. That was like me when Evan Hansen put us on the bus. I was like, oh, God, not again. Yeah. Like, yeah. My face on a London but bus. Yeah, then I was like missing school to go to rehearsals. And like, it was really good fun. It was such a, it was a really fun time. Mm, yeah. And a really good group of kids to do it with as well. And we were all really well looked after. And yeah, I loved it. It was really yeah. good. Yeah. How was seeing yourself, you both of you, on posters and stuff for the first? Was it a bit of a surreal experience? It was perfectly natural. I knew it was happening. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was coming. All the time. I, it was an extension of myself, really, truly. No, it's very yeah, surreal. I, very, very I still, yeah, I, I found it weird. Yeah. <laughs> I just found it really strange. Um, I had so much graffiti on my face. My yeah, it was a hilarious post <laughs> review. Moustaches, glasses. I posted it on the group chat. Someone had drawn a moustache on you. Various on things the, I can't mention as On well. the tube. Hmm. Yeah. Various things I can't mention. Graffiti words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really know what you said from the yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's very fun though. It's very surreal. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. 
And Sam, I think I saw you when you were like 14, maybe. <laughs> what year in... was it? Do you know? <sighs> now you're asking. Yeah. It I, was... can't, I can't remember. Well, the Scarecrow. Oh, yeah, in the, the Scarecrow. Wizard of Oz. It's Grinch and Checkermead. Checkermead, yeah. Ooh. And then also Val. Val Jean. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. the Miz. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even have a beard? Oh my god. I I didn't even I didn't have a lot of body hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, I was very young then. Yeah. I, was, I think that was when I, that also I, I solidified my passion for it, that kind of responsibility. That was my first experience leading a show yeah and it was a really surreal beautiful experience um there were so many other people who i'm still in contact today that i yeah. shared that experience with i think that for a lot of us it was our first time being in a, being in a theatrical community that extended beyond our school mm -hmm. i think there were people from there were members of that cast that we've never seen before you know in different schools different enemy schools you know sackville <laughs> come at me bro. um like it was just crazy. It was a fantastic experience. I, um, my mum, bless her, who was my biggest fan and always will be my manager. Um, she's not. Um, <laughs> she was like wants to like rally the troops together and like put fifty quid in each to like get it recorded and like you know oh, produce like a DVD so yeah. we could like watch again. But thank God it didn't because I have my memories of it that I sound great. And please don't say I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm not fishing for any compliments. But like God knows how I sound about them because I just like winged it. Yeah. And I think there was a beauty of that. It was like, I never had, I was just this arrogant, excited, confident, overly confident, like teenager. Yeah. Who was going like, now watch me. Hopefully not in an unprofessional, that sounds incredibly unprofessional. Yeah. But because we were kids, it just didn't matter. It was just fun. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I didn't have this kind of like, I can't have any cheese. I've got to have six liters of water day. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. I've got this like ritual that I need to do, to, you know, like cracking my head <laughs> on a wall, like a crazy person. Um, I didn't get paid, but you know. <laughs> but it was very fun and I learned a lot. It was a yeah. lot of responsibility. Um, I certainly didn't like, I, I used to think quite a lot about it back in the day when I was doing Evan, I would think about it and I just yeah. got how different it was like, because it was just raw, you know, it was, it was just, we're just going to wing it and see how it goes. And obviously the audiences are very forgiving because 95% of them were parents. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you, you just had a, a great time and like, it was just brilliant. I remember like my mom was figuring out how to look after a young budding actor. <laughs> she like, we had a camping flask and she just went <laughs> and she boiled this kettle and put this boiling water in the flask and was like, this would be good for you. And then like the two hours later, <laughs> I was like, this would be good for me. And I just burned, obviously, oh, no. scolded my entire, <laughs> and I had a scab on my top lip for the entire run. And That's I was cute. like, looking back, I'm like, what was that going to do? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> a bit of lemon, a bit of ginger or honey now, you know, but just like boiling water in a flask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. Thanks, mum. <laughs> Tricks of the trade. Yeah, she's yeah. crazy. But yeah, it was Man. great. It was fun. Like, same with Scarecrow as well. It's just like, when you don't have that professional kind of responsibility. Yeah. That, that there's, there's a fantastic part about theatre. And my friends who are, aren't in the industry, they always go, how can you do the same thing every day? I don't want to. But I don't understand how you do it. It's and a good it's impression. Like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and uh, I just can't be bothered to explain to them that it just isn't, you know? You know, and that's the beauty of theatre. Every show is different. And there's, a, yeah. there's, a, there's an extension of that, which is go, okay, now I've got to do it again after doing it yesterday. And what you do with your day really defines you. So doing Les Mis and doing, you know, Wizard of Oz, where it was like on for a week, less than that. Yeah. You could just go like, woohoo, and just have fun and just, yeah. you know, be a kid. So yeah, that was it. I, I, I learned a lot, yeah. 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 I mean, from what I remember, you were great. Thank so. you. <laughs> Thank you. It was a long time ago, so you like, could have been awful. I remember just having, like, just stupid stuff, like, doing the last scene where he dies. Like, we didn't do any aging makeup, so I was just this young teenager who just looked like, obviously, like a baby playing this adult. Yeah. But, like, I thought to myself, mm, I'm going to, like, make myself look sick and old, because you know how he's, like, dies well as one dies spoilers spoilers um, and like so I, put, I just found this like makeup and just like painting myself white nice like white <laughs> casper like casper yeah. and i had like put like bags under my eyes and nice. then i would cry and be like i'm dying and then like i do the bows and then it'd just be like this horrible <laughs> like, like my mascara was running it was yeah. so weird but just it was just great and that's the experience you get with like just raw theater you know it's just so and anything could happen and no one cares, you know? It was just a great yeah. time. You know, it was great, great, it was a great time. Yeah. 
you that. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, how do you deal with the downtime and the in between moments of shows? Because inevitably, it's going to happen to everyone. Shows yeah. come to an end, contracts mm-hmm. come to an end. Sometimes you have auditions, sometimes you don't. So, what do you, what do you guys do at the minute? You've got a lot more to say than I do. <laughs> I. I'm veering down photography routes nice. at the moment. It's how you and I got yes. in contact. And um, I think for If you me, haven't seen the photos of me, go. <laughs> Sam, was like, Cam. Sam was like a test model for me. We, spent a, day, we spent a day in the studio and it was great. And you were so ill that day. I was so But blue. I didn't know until he got I'm on the bus. And he was like, hello. I was like, I didn't know that you were ill, but we made you look good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. They were um, great photos. Hold on, you keep going. I think for me, it's just... Um, Obviously mentioning before, I have always grown up very creative. And I think it for me it's finding what's Zooming on that. Look at that, guys. See <laughs> yeah. that? You're not gonna be able to see that. No, I think we will. There's another one. You Hang look on. great. We can flash it. Look at that well. Vogue. See that? That's what she can do. <laughs> at Lulu Cam. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Stay still, everyone, don't move. If people are just listening to this on the podcast, they're gonna go, What yeah. is going on? Oh, I'll do an audio description. I look like an Adonis Greek god. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about that? How about that, listeners? You do look really good. Yeah, that's yeah. you. That's you oh, doing that. Thank you. Um, Modest. So I you think, keep going. I'm just gonna look at myself. <laughs> I think for me, it's just if you're not involved in a show or something like that, I know for me personally, I need to keep my creative brain ticking, doing something. Um, and photography, I've always enjoyed doing photography, even when I was younger. But mm. I'd never kind of done it seriously. Yeah. And I mean, we were involved with Evan for such a long time. Um, because we had the pandemic in the middle and all these kind of things. And I'd bought a new camera in, we call it Evan season one and Evan season two. So yeah, if I say season one and season two. (laughs) Pre-COVID, post-COVID. Pre-COVID, post-COVID. But season one, I bought a camera and was like, I'm just going to play around a bit. Mm. And lockdown happened, started playing around a little bit more. And then we got into season two and Mm. I'd upgraded my camera. And I thought, then when we finished the show, I was like, this is a really good opportunity if i want to kind of take this seriously as something else that i could be doing now's the time because i feel like if i don't do it now i never will yeah. so that's kind of where a lot of my energy has been going into in terms of that side of things mm. um and obviously just back in the audition room getting mm. back into that groove because again yeah. we as we were both very very fortunate that we went straight into a show pretty much straight after drama school and Mm. so actually my experiences auditioning um yes I was in and out of audition rooms a lot very very lucky but I hadn't been in a rehearsal room uh, rehearsal room I hadn't been in an audition room for such a long time and lots of things had swapped over to self-tape so it was kind of learning how to do that side of things as well and I know um I know it's involved in drama school courses a lot more now than when I think we were there because of the pandemic it's had such a big hour, influence like an hour 45 session in three years on self tapes because back when I was a drama school yeah like, I did you a, just a, like you're going into the room yeah. you know and then COVID happened no, no, yeah I did a um <laughs> I did a I think it was like a 10 week eight week course during lockdown that's online sick. which was all oh, about that's a good idea. self-taping for film and tv and because I was going I need to learn how to do it yeah. properly and professionally and um i mean you can don't get me wrong you don't have to have all this fancy i've equipment. helped lucy with her self tapes they are incredible like oh, she has this you. incredible camera uploads yeah. it to a laptop Did-did-did-did. i'm literally like, nice let me get this 18 quid tripod chuck my yeah. phone on it <laughs> crack it go and just figure but it that's out that's fine mm. as well like yeah. that's that's fine i think so long as they can see what you look like there's such an annoying quality it's of stuff. not to deter you from your original question we will loop back <laughs> it's okay. apologies um, but with the self tapes, I think what I'm I'm really vocally angry right now <laughs> about is I just I resent this sentiment that you have to make it look studio professional. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I know you just said that it is like fine to just crack your phone and stuff, but essentially, uh, due to like I don't know, I don't know what word is, but basically what what we know is that casting directors and directors and producers, they'll look at your self-tape and they'll notice the first four seconds. And if they yeah. aren't enthralled in the first, less, less than two seconds, if it doesn't, if you don't look like the person that they want, in my experience of self-tapes anyway, which is, I've had a few now, 
and not heard back from a single one. And I think it's down to the fact that I'm just using bathroom lighting, like a crusty white, off-white, egg-white cream wall, you know, like, <laughs> and just figuring it out. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I remember a few people saying, why don't you get like a blue screen, like a blue backdrop, and like get this ring light. And oh. I am now annoyingly caving in and buying a damn ring light. But I just, <laughs> re I just resent it. It's got to be like, hey, welcome to my studio. Hire me. It's like, no, I'm yeah. in my living room. I've taken a painting down from my wall. Like, just yeah. get me in the room yeah, if, you, yeah. if you want more. Because you know this is such a clinical thing. I hate self-tapes. Like, hate them. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't... <laughs> yeah, I, do you don't know? <laughs> I, think my, I think my thing with, with self-tapes is that I think... I, I get into a rut where I then want to film the scene about 20 times. Yeah. So I'm like, it's not right, it's they're not right, flawless. it's not right. Yeah, they're great. But Lucy's then, are amazing. Oh, they're very sweet. They are. Um, but when you're in the room, but it's you've got like... The, I'm sorry, you've got the knowledge, you know what I mean? You've got the know-how. And look, that's why it looks great. Oh, you've got that gaga gaga. Like, yeah, it's carry on, through sorry. experimenting and, mm. and things like that. As I say, I did this course through lockdown because I was like, I, I want to be, you know, clued up and know what I'm doing. Mm. and. That, and it was also a great chance to do some acting again. Like yeah. we worked yeah. with people on Zoom and we mm. worked with casting directors and stuff like that. It was really good fun. Mm. Um, and again, kept my creative brain going during the lockdown and stuff yeah. like that. And I think, you know, you can have a hundred credits on your CV, but I don't think you should ever stop learning. Yeah, is my, is my, is my view. So I'm always wanting to learn more. Yeah. Um, but uh, what were we talking about? Self tapes. No, oh, we we're yeah. actually talking about what we're doing in our downtime. But now, our downtime. now I'm sweating. So well, how we got well, <laughs> self tapes. We've been doing self tapes in our downtime. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think the the difference between <laughs> self tapes and in person is in person you have one, two, maybe three shots yeah. with a bit of redirection if they want to redirect you. Whereas self tapes, you're relying on your own critique yeah. within you to decide what's the best one to send. And I spend hours watching my own face <laughs> and after a while it's like when you're choosing a headshot when you're sat watching yourself yeah. on repeat for a long time i think you can go a little bit insane so sometimes i actually I get it. like I've, i revel in my own reflection so, um... <laughs> like i'll often um i'll often send myself tapes sometimes i send them to rupert in fact i send them to rupert quite a lot rupert king of tv he's in bridgerton season two yeah, if people cool. have not seen him and he's so good um, yeah, but he hot. he's got a lot more experience in film and TV than I do. Does a lot of self tapes, and so sometimes I will have to send them to other people to get their views and opinions. Mm. You're right. So I'm just cracking on that. Oh. Good. Um, <laughs> because I feel like I will get myself into a rut yeah. if I sit and watch them all myself. And it's good because other people view you differently than you view yourself. 100%. So I always feel like it's good to get you know a second or third opinion. Yeah. But. Um, I respect the yeah. the positives of self tapes. I think you know, obviously, there's a monetary thing that you that producers have that they can they don't have to hire a room. Yeah, I totally respect that. I think obviously, when you're taping for a telly job or a film job, they've got to see what you look like through a screen. Mm. I totally respect that. Yeah, I think that's such a respectable reason. But I think you know, there's a chemistry thing that you don't have. And I think if you look at like the golden age actors we have now like you'll find like brian cox samuel l jackson christ even like adam driver i know he's not that old but they'll you'll find they just speak so passionately about how they used to just be in the room yeah and i think that's such a beautiful part and you know i, I had a few self-tapes self over skype when i was doing like zoom wasn't a thing you know yeah. when i was doing evan and that was only because people were in New York. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Do you remember Skype? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I actually do some of mine on Skype yeah, as well. I, I think it is a shame. I think what, it, you know, COVID did like send a massive ripple effect through yeah. throughout the industry. And I think it is, you know, and I'm sure, and this is because I'm just deeply, deeply untalented, that I haven't heard back from a self-tape, <laughs> you know, audition yet. And I think I assume when you get throughout the, you know, You've got chemistry reads, and you then you go in the room, and then, and that's when it thaws out a bit. So I yeah. respect that you can't just bring everyone in, like you know. Yeah, so I get that. Apologies if I've offended anyone. Please hire me. I'm desperate for it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's there's pros and cons to I think stuff that's come out of the pandemic in terms of the industry. absolutely absolutely yeah. But, um, yeah. So going back to downtime, yeah. which is what I mean about going off on a tangent. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing as I say, veering down the photography route. Um, I'm working with a really lovely family at the moment, actually. Um, nannying. And oh, I nannying. adore oh, cool. them. I adore that's them. Cute. Yeah. And and that's the thing. It's finding the other things that you enjoy mm. and things that bring you happiness and things that bring you 
passion mm. like don't get me wrong it's always going to be frustrating if there's a job that you really want and then you don't get it but it's just how you deal with that and yeah i was always mm. told you know for every 100 no's that you get it takes one yes and that's exactly. what I try and yeah. cling on yeah. to, you know, if something doesn't go your way. And and thing is, sometimes it's also wrapping your head around if you don't get something, it's not because you're not talented. It's not because, you know, of anything to do with that. It can be down to the smallest, smallest detail yeah. as to why yeah. something might not go in your direction. But it's fine because then it just means that there's something else that will go in your direction. Exactly. So it's just making sure that you try and keep a positive yeah. mindset around it, which can be really hard to do. Don't get me wrong. I think it's easier said than done sometimes, but um, it's it's just it's just part of the industry, isn't mm, it? It's absolutely. part of the life of this. The downtime is this is, job. A lot of my friends um, have said who have worked previously, they found that the downtime is where they find more about themselves as an actor. Yeah, and it is doing the totally. Job. And I think that's so true. Like when you when you uh, you have yourself and and no, nothing else to kind of distract you from yourself, which I think is a massive cog in being an actor is that you know your ability to filter yourself away from who you are rather than you know if you work in an office or you know engineer or whatever other job where it doesn't involve pretending to be someone else where mm -hmm. you just live with yourself for your entire life and you know um, yeah <laughs> and i would throw up because i hate myself but anyway um <laughs> no it lets you get back in touch yeah. with who, yeah that downtime with is who so you are. and i think and i remember when i was doing evan i made it very clear to myself and i kind of have done this and i kind of haven't um that I wasn't going to freak out when work doesn't come, when a phone doesn't ring after my no, ever has you know, it's because it's, I've got to say, I can't just be saying yes to things that are offered to me because I want to go in a certain direction. Professionally and personally, I want to go in a certain direction and that requires patience, it requires da 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 da, -da you know, so mm -hmm. in the meantime, I'm just eating into my savings, eating and going to the gym and just yeah. like playing Fortnite and cracking my controllers against my skull and yeah. stuff you know how it is yeah. yeah it's a good opportunity to get back in touch with mm. friends and family that you maybe yeah, haven't been able sure. to see for a long time because it's such a tricky schedule yeah. in terms of yeah, you know most people that are doing the nine to five or any other video game i shouldn't have just mentioned uh, other, <laughs> other video games are available <laughs> of course we're not indulging in just one company nice endorsing endorsing carry on you could indulge them yeah um we yeah so i'm lucky i've been able to see loads of friends family that i didn't get to see as much whilst doing the contract so it's there's lots of pros and cons with being in and out of work but it's it's just it's just a lifestyle mm. it's just a lifestyle but yeah. I mean, we chose to be in it and so mm -hmm. Part of the game. and this is the thing the pros are incredible and yeah. they outweigh any cons mm. in terms sure. of rejections or you know stuff that might be going on between jobs or anything like that so i still consider myself really lucky yeah. to be able to be part of this the, industry there's a piece of advice i give to people at stage door they would ask you know any advice for blah, 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 blah. and i just say just think that auditioning is the job getting it's just a bonus you know if you're auditioning you're working you're a yeah. working actor just because you're not getting paid doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't a professional actor performer dance whatever mm -hmm. um you just got to keep <clears throat> i you know we recently not to go into any detail the pair of us for different jobs recently got like a hard like no you know, it was, you know, not to speak on your behalf, but it was mm -hmm. really crushing. And it was really like, we got close to two different jobs. So I won't yeah. say which ones, but, um, and it's that experience where it was like, what I realized after I got my no was that even being considered for a job I really wanted was just enough for me to feel like now I'm an actor, you know? And I think it's that it's, it's leering away from that where when you only have one possible job, nothing else in the pipe, I'll speak openly about my line of work like i don't have any projects in any way that i'm considering right now and so when i found one that i was really passionate about and i really wanted to fight for and made my agent really fight for and yeah. convince them and then they go with in another direction it's that kind of feeling of just being like literally dropped over a cliff like they're dangling you over this cliff and it's like that brim breath that you have of almost floating and it's like and then they drop you and it's that learning how to climb back up the yeah cliff where it's like i'm yeah. not that's part of the game, you know, like I was, I'm honored to be considered and I'm very blessed that I have that no, because look how far I got, look how, mm. you know, yeah. so it's that, it's flipping it. And, and you think, learn from it, you learn you? from it. There's a massive yeah. mental game with it. You really just learn how to flip it. Cause if you get yeah. crushed, it's just not like, obviously it's fine to be upset, but it's how you deal with that. Changing to quote the mindset, Rocky yeah. Balboa, it's not about how hard <laughs> you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit 
and get back up again. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not going exactly. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Each audition is a learning curve. Mm. And like it's almost like an opportunity to almost workshop. You know, you get to work with directors in the room and and work with other actors if they're in the room as well. So yeah. it's all always use an audition yeah. as an opportunity to learn. If you Network, sign something learn. really badly, which has happened to me a few times, you know, Obviously sometimes you, sometimes you have an off day. Everyone has an off day. If something's not quite gone the way that you hoped or wanted it to, that's okay. Yeah, you just learn from it, and you you pick up and go, okay, that didn't quite go how I wanted it to mm. why did it not go the way that I wanted it to mm. was it nerves was I not vocally warm enough was I you know all sorts of things yeah. or is my hay fever getting in the way today do I need to make sure that next time my hay fever is not being a pain right. there's so many things that yeah. you can learn from and then take mm. in when you go into the next room and you can just constantly improve yeah um yeah well, no I think that's wicked advice so we're going to move on to a little game we like to play now um oh. I love games would I improv to you? So we've spoken about it before, but mm-hmm. for first time listeners, the game is, uh, it's a cross between two truths and a lie and would mm-hmm. I lie to you? You guys have sat down with Elle, the producer, and you've given me two facts each. And then Elle has produced a third fact, which is the lie, oh, which you guys I... haven't actually seen yet. No. So the idea of the game is that it's on you guys to improvise to convince me that the third fact is also true. And you've got to guess which is a lie out of the three. Got you. That's exactly yeah. it. And we can so, convince you that every single one is true. Yes. So we're going to start off with Lucy. I'm going to read all three facts. Well, yeah. Now I'm going to go back through them individually, ask you some questions, see if I can decipher which okay. one is not a fact. Yeah. So fact one, Lucy was a model for a children's height chart when she was five years old. Fact two. Lucy had a dog called Zoe when she was younger, the same as her character's name in Dear Evan Hansen. Very cute. Meant to be. Number three, when Lucy was in year six, she played the front, front is important, half of a French camel (laughs) named Claude in the Nativity. Okay, Okay, that is oddly specific. So number one, Take your pick. (laughs) You were a model for a children's height chart. Yeah. For like no further question. No further yeah. <laughs> for like So so for a theme park or No, so it was for schools <laughs> okay. around West Sussex, England, I'm not sure. And they wanted to have a height chart mm-hmm. in the schools to have in like reception mm-hmm. classes. Yeah. And it was a big ruler, I believe. And then they just wanted a young child on this poster stood next to the ruler. And right. I got chosen because I was the smallest person in my class and they needed someone who was really small. So I had to go to a studio, had my photo taken. Oh, studio. Yeah, I was wearing little green lycra shorts <laughs> and a yellow oh, t-shirt. Really? Really odd mix. Yeah. And I just had to pose and then I got photoshopped in next to this ruler. And I they didn't know. even do it live with the ruler? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> no one carved out a massive ruler. <laughs> yeah, so then I got used on a poster and it got sent round school. There you go. Yeah. Oh, so you and the ruler were on the wall for people to measure themselves. Yes, to measure you. themselves against. So, like, you can have little kids that can then stand up next to the yeah. ruler, and I would Cute. be creeping so behind them. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number two, you had a dog called Zoe yeah. when you were younger, and it's kind of written in the stars that you yeah. went on. So, is Zoe still with us or? No. No, but I mean, we got Zoe, I was quite young. It was more my brother that chose, it was a cavalry called Cute. Zoe. And it was more, it's quite a big age gap between me and my brother. So he's four years older. So he'd like gone off to school. I was still at home and I think he was feeling a little bit left out. Mm-hmm. And we'd always wanted a pet. We'd always had cats yeah. before. And he was just like, really want a dog. You know like how all kids want a dog. Um, so we got a dog. It was a surprise. Got it around where well, it was about two weeks before Christmas. Uh, got okay. the dog, Cavapoo. And he chose the name. I didn't have anything to do with it. So I, had a, I still had a cat at the this time so called weird. Hamish. So we had Hamish and Zoe. So we had the Cavapoo. Zoe. But it was it was all my brother. It wasn't me. What so maybe color? he wrote it in the, the dog? stars. It was like, you know, that fox red. Okay. Fox yeah. red. There's so Absolutely. many different. Because you get like F1 
be there's oh so many God. camel yeah. poos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, she was like Factory. a fox. She was like a foxy red <laughs> color, and she had she was more wavy than curly. Yeah. So she had these little wavy ears. She's got the, yeah. Really, really dark eyes. Okay. She's gorgeous. But no, she's no longer with us because I was quite young when we got her. Yeah. Yeah. And number three, why is the front half important of the French camel named Claude? Because no one wants to be the back half. I mean, this is true. Duh. You want to be the true. front half because then you are the face yeah. of the camel. And you don't have to be hunched, o- hunched over the whole time. You don't have to be hunched over and you don't have to have your head in someone else's backside yeah. whilst you bend over. That's yeah. my... Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, sex, nativity, it makes sense. <laughs> Named Claude. Did you name the camel? No, it was just in the script. In the script, <laughs> No, I did have to audition. For the camel? Yeah. Still had to audition, like, even for Year 6 mm. Nativity. No, I don't think I did that. <laughs> we were dressed in... My Year 6 teacher wore a lot of camel-coloured clothes. So we actually wore my teacher's clothes. We are breaking your reality right now. This is really... Maybe I'm, that was my break into the industry. In I'm going to have so many clips of me just going, this is hard. This yeah. is really hard. Because <laughs> every single time... You're going to walk out of this world not knowing no. what's real. Yeah. So, you aren't really here now, by the way. Freaking None of this is real. This is a matrix, bro. <laughs> yeah? Wake up, guys. Okay. <laughs> I need to pick one. You were oddly specific about the clothes you were wearing for the height chart. So, and it was an eclectic mix of colors, and kids do that when they choose their own outfits. So that makes me believe that it was real, because that was a lot of detail to go into. That one was real. They had a dog called Zoe. I want to believe that one. It's really cute. I feel like I got less passion about the camel. About the camel? Yeah. I'm... Mm, my gut's always wrong. But my gut's <laughs> telling me that the camel is... Fact three, the camel. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to lock it in. Is the lie? Is, no, now you're looking at me like it's not the lie. I just don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, is fact three about the camel the lie? No. <laughs> That one is true. That one, okay, let me have another guess. Okay. But listeners and watchers, he got oh it wrong. God, it's it's <laughs> just with a record. His first guess is wrong. Is wrong. So this is second guess is just child play. I was a French camel <laughs> so there's no in my rules. year I six walk out the and, and it was actually called Claude. Yep. Okay. I had to audition in a French accent. Wow. Yep. The camel spoke. Let's not do oh, that. Oh, the camel spoke. Yeah. <laughs> the camel had lines. I am a camel. No. no Pivotal <laughs> role. Okay. Just had a little Borat then. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to say that the children's model... I'm a camel! Sorry. Is the children's the... model the lie? It's not the lie, is it? No, that's true. <laughs> you are tragic. I have, I have never in my life owned a dog. Oh, <laughs> that was the single-handedly the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Yeah, she went, when you went like this. Yeah. Oh. You already that said the story that she gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is what I mean, we're crazy. Psychopaths. Yeah, no, the, 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 I've test. never, I've never ever had a dog. Well, I live with a dog now. There is a cavapoo, mm, yeah. and one of my really, really good friends has got a cavapoo puppy, and she said it was like a fox red. Okay, which is where I got the color from. Good, yeah. And she was trying to explain the breeds to me because I know nothing about dog breeds. That at was all. good. Thank you. That was good. Very right, Sam. I've got, I've got to get at least 50%. No, I want, I want, uh, I want them to get, no. Yeah, got, no. It's you want me to fail. Pressure. I need you to fail. Now, All right. So it's fact... so bad recently. <laughs> Thank you. Fact one, Sam, mm-hmm. is Sam once played a massive boot in the gang show in Scouts. Mm-hmm. The boot even had a mechanism for opening the front. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I mean, I won't, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> fact two... Sam once met Camilla, the royal Camilla, Mm -hmm. after a show, Mm -hmm. and he managed to swear in front of her. Mm -hmm. Bit of a slip up, but she didn't seem annoyed. Mm -hmm. I can believe that 100%. But the way I've been stopping myself, (laughs) (laughs) my heart's going to feel sick. And fact three Sam was originally meant to have glasses and painted on acne for his role in Dear Evan Hansen. Okay, I read for a minute there. I read it as painted on glasses, and that would have been 
<laughs> that would have been an interesting one. Um, Maybe you would have played Harry Potter as yeah, a kid yeah. and painted some glasses. <laughs> I'm, a what? <laughs> what? I'm a wizard. Okay, so number one, you played a massive boot in the... What's the gang so the, show? So the gang show um, is something that I haven't mentioned, uh, something I'm very proud of. Okay. Uh, it's when it's a performance that you do at a theatre, a local theatre near you in your kind of county, village area, um, with scouts and mm. Beavers, Cub Scouts, Explorers. Mm -hmm. Um, at this point in my life, I think I was a cub. No, that's okay. a lie. No. no, it wasn't like cub, which is the second youngest one. Okay. Um, and it was a monopoly themed right. show. Okay, cool. And there was this whole, cause what the gang show is, they are, they are like genuine fever dream scenes Yeah. because they're, we never write anything new for them. It's like a celebration of stories and lore, L O R E. Yep about scout history sure. and these stories were written supposedly by campfires and stuff like okay. that um and we would you know it was a life-size monopoly board as well oh, that was oh. like that was a backdrop and nice. we get the audience in and we yeah. roll the dice. we basically play monopoly and i would have scenes and i would sit in this boot and i would go wow and i'm doing a prepubescent voice for yeah. listeners out there um <laughs> that's just that a regular a and you've got a lever and they would open the front of controlled by you mm. so you, uh, you puppeteered like, an wow. enormous boot yeah right. like it was like car it was like wooden frame inside and I, yeah it was crazy okay you met camilla yeah after dara van hansen mm. she was watching she was we had yeah we had camilla we didn't have um the now king uh for obvious reasons but we had camilla and yeah. it was like a charity thing yeah um that she brought in i can't remember which charity it was for and she just came to say she came to say well we also then months and months later we had um what are their names will and kate mm -hmm. come and i learned from my yeah. previous experience why did you swear well i'm basically with me i was very nervous as yeah. you can tell i've got quite a lot of energy anyway and yeah. i i didn't say it wasn't a bad swear okay. i just said like bloody oh. but because it made and it's so british and patriotic that i think that's why i kind of got away with it i was like she was going oh isn't this real difficult i was like that's so bloody difficult honestly. yeah and I just wanted, and I wanted to be cool, but um, I also wanted to be professional, and I failed. Yeah. But no, I just said bloody. So it was. I think that's why I got. If it was anything worse, I think it would have been visually very yeah. awkward. But um, it was really, really weird. Yeah, it was so bloody difficult. Yeah. And then you were originally meant to have glasses and painted on acne. Yeah. Well, for Darren Hansen, painted on acne. No. Oh yeah, paint like makeup, not glasses. No, painted on. Yeah, I would yeah. have my glasses that I do actually have still. Yeah, then I also have yeah, painted on acne. It's wow. it very very strange. Um, I'm not sure why. I think it's just because I'm just so good looking. Yeah, <laughs> they just had to bring it down and right. exfoliated. Right. Our, you know, retinol, all this stuff. Um, no, but then yeah, they just I think they wanted me to look a bit younger and a bit a bit more vulnerable. Not that acne creates vulnerability. Yeah, yeah, shapes and sizes are beautiful. Love yourself. But um, I think that kind of image gave a bit more believability okay. that okay. I was, in fact, going through puberty. Yeah. I was 16, 17, you know. This is stressful because neither of you have flinched at any of these facts. <laughs> so, I mean. This whole game, every single one has been true. Like, your producer just lied to you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank yeah. you. <sighs> Please ask away. Uh, you know a lot about the Scouts. I know that the Scouts exist, but I wouldn't have known that much detail about the different levels and the different ages. And you went into a lot of detail about the Monopoly board and you even did the voice that you could just that be trying voice to was throw me not off. to throw you off, but it was just my prepubescent voice. Camilla, would you have been embarrassed about saying bloody? For, I guess it's different people's interpretations of swear words. She wants not to add on to that story, but I met her again at the house that she lives in near Buckingham Palace. Okay. Um, and I met her again, and I made very sure that I didn't. And I didn't uh, say, "Do you remember me?" But I made sure she gave out some like specialist Olivier's. Yeah. Um, and the way she held them, not to speak ill of our beloved queen, um, but they were like, you know, they're heavy these Olivier's, mm -hmm. and she was like, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. so, subsiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weak wrist. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. I can't imagine a show as 
deep as Dear Evan Hansen and modern as Dear Evan Hansen wanting to give you acne because like you've mentioned it doesn't I don't think that acne would add to the character I don't think people would be like oh he's got acne so that means a lot mm. okay. but maybe I've just put my foot in it there I'm gonna go with hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get it. I feel I'm gonna incredible it. right now this is amazing Do you feel powerful I should gaslight people more yeah really? <laughs> okay no the boot was it. very believable, so props to you if that's the lie. <laughs> um, Camilla, oh, it's just so random, but then you've been really good at coming up with these fake ones. God, I just, if number three is true, I'm going to... I'm going to yeah, no. go with number three. That's the lie. That's the lie. That's wrong, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, a genuine... Have I done this? That was a genuine... I've got a picture of you in the glasses somewhere. Yeah, we're, that's never seen the light of day. Um, I look insane. <laughs> I you look, look like mental. a piece of Lego. Yeah, it was, that was a, a, a weird directorial angle that we eventually happily yeah. departed from. Can yeah. you just tell me which one's the lie? Because the I'm not... The Camilla one's a lie. That's, that's a lie. That was <laughs> we did meet Did Kate you Wilson. actually meet her I for Olivia? Yeah, that was, so that's how I kind of conquered oh. it. Hey, listen, anyone out there who wants to lie better, the best lies are better than truth, okay? <laughs> um, um, well done, guys. Thank great. you. You smashed it. I'm thank so nervous. You. Oh my god. Thank you guys for coming on. It's been my an awesome pleasure. Yeah, it's been thank you. Um, thank you for coming here to the Theatre Cafe. Yeah. Um, I've actually got gifts for you for coming on. Just to say a quick thank you. What? So what? My cameraman Ollie. You're crazy. On the bags. Here you go, Lucy. Yay. And here you go, Sam. Wow. Bless you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Open them now. Feel free what? to open them now. Um, they're oh from my, my friend. She's wow. got a uh, small business. Yorkshire the Yorkshire and a handgun? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <there's not> really. <laughs> yeah, she's got a small business called the Yorkshire Nisser, as you can see on the stickers. And Stop! she's done little. I wait for you to. Little dolls. I love voodoo as well. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> voodoo dolls. That's beautiful. Yeah, oh my so god. She's done these Look at this. Hey. See this? Right, hang on. <gasps> if I do this. Wait, I'm going to take the label off mine only because go. it looks like wow. a cape. At no the one moment. get hold of that doll because it actually does. Control. Actually working. I'm not doing like. Ah! <laughs> that is so oh, cute. I'm feeling... <gasps> Oh my god! But yeah, so I love the detail that you go. www.yorkshireknitter.co.uk and on Instagram or Twitter at Yorkshire Knitter. Big up. For the best results, Look, sponge clean. She's even got, you know, when I did the half yeah, up, half she's down. Got yeah. I love the half up, half down. Yeah. She's got my monk hair correct as well. <laughs> I love it. That's not a hate on her work. That's literally my hair. Back yeah, in the day. She I does an amazing We called it Lego Man hair. Cast on it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Stop. And you know what? It's actually accurate as well because you would think that it would just be easier to have the white go all the way up, but the cast did only go to my forearm. There you Pops go. You. That is so beautiful. But yeah, thank you, Ellie, for that. Thank Ellie, you. Ellie, you're great. Thank you. But yeah, oh thank God. you guys for coming on. And I'm really happy that you like dogs so much. Just looking at everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make sure you read it. Don't put it in the washing oh, machine. I've got like a nice little box that's full of like Evan memories oh, and cute. all these kind of things not that i want to put this in a box but <laughs> what a cute little that's addition that's so sweet oh my god and sorry i know we're running out of footage and your memory cards are filling up everyone um because we've been chatting for so long but the little there's it's not just a straight polo she's got the little collar right as well yeah so i mean the detail is incredible to detail is that's so good Aww. well hey <laughs> But yeah, no, thank you guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very much. And that concludes, down concludes, that concludes Into the Wings Series 1. So thank you for season being here. Season 1. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well thank done, you. Yeah. Was it round of applause? Thank you guys so much for tuning in on the finale episode. It's been awesome having Lucy and Sam here. I hope you've enjoyed. We'll be back for Season 2 with more great guests and hopefully more little dolls. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully more little dolls but it's been great thank you guys for tuning in see you in season two <laughs> totally ruined that for that's what i want <laughs>